All right, so this lecture is about expanded octets and how we do electron dot diagrams or Lewis dot diagrams, same thing, for uh, compounds that have more than eight pairs of electrons. Understand the central atom here, party people, that is hybridized always, not the outer terminal ones, are elements that are beyond the second energy level. They're in row three, and if you're in row three, you have S's, you have P's, and you now have D's. So we can incorporate them. We know that phosphorus, okay, its configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. doesn't have any D's or electrons in it, but it's there in the third energy level. It's sitting there looming to have electrons if they get excited. So what we're saying is, if I have a box of phosphorus, as I talked about, okay, here's my S and here's my three P's, and now a D is empty. I have two in here, and I have one apiece. If I excite it, this electron can go here, and I have five orbitals that can hybridize to make five new orbitals that are called, you got it, SP3 D hybridization, okay? And that's going to make five pairs of electrons that repel themselves into the family we just talked about. And I'm going to bring you here because I know that you need to look at this, especially my first period class, who I didn't have the time. If you look at here, five pairs of electrons, trigonal bipyramidal, okay, is the name. Top of a three-sided pyramid on both sides. The, those electrons, look at my video with the balloons, or remember me doing the balloons. So five bonding or five pairs is trigonal bipyramidal. One lone pair, we said seesaw, T-shaped, linear. It's right there. Notice the lone pairs are in the equator position. Now we also have one more expanded octet value. If I have six pairs of electrons, they'll make a square planar in the middle with top and bottom. This is called an octahedral because of the eight sides. If you make a triangle here and the side and the back, four on top, four on the bottom, you'll have eight sides. But more importantly, this compound could have 12 uh, electrons. These compounds above can have uh, 10 expanded octets. Why? Well, for this one, okay, very simply, this one, this type of compound, all right, has sp3d2. Look, count the orbitals. One, three, and two more give me a total of six pairs of electrons and they make this shape don't know why the color is going out now if you have lone pairs the lone pairs in this family are in the axial positions one lone pair square pyramidal top of a pyramid that's a square now it comes back and if you have two lone pairs they have to be in the uh, equatorial position I mean in the axial position you'll have this square on the same plane and those are the shapes Okay, so let's just get to it. So this is six pairs of electrons for some atoms. This is five. Okay, and these are the electron domain shapes. This, of course, has five. So it's an S, three P's, and two, uh, one D. Count it. S is one. There's three of these and one D involved. Okay, and I didn't show this. Well, I, I did, so we'll go, we'll go on from here. Okay, so let's take, take, take a gander at some of these that I'll model you through. And I'm in Jarnell. Okay, so let's come back here. Let's clean this up. Uh, I don't know where that went. Uh, okay, I didn't want that. Okay, clean this up. And, and here I am. So PCL5. You can do this with me. I'm going to start with phosphorus. Let's go, uh, let's go change my color because I can. All right, so P. Now, I'm going to put out the five valence electrons. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to rewrite this, so please give yourself some space. I'm going to put the CLs in here. And I'm going to take every CL, okay, and I'll just change the color so you can see for the CL. CLs will make green, let's say. Has seven valence electrons. This CL also has seven, which you can see is a nice pairing Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, um, so two, 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 
and then two, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, another pair here. It's a bad drawing. Then another chlorine, and I'll add it seven, and let's say another chlorine, and I'll add, I should have an L here too, okay? And let me just clean this up because I just made a poor one here. Okay, this one was poor as well. So let's do chlorine again. So Cl, yeah, the final one works better, I think. And there we go. And then this Cl brings one to the table, and there's its six. Okay, and of course it's five, so this Cl has its five. You've got to draw all the lone pairs. Now, I'm going to draw this and rearrange this. I know that five pairs of electrons, and if I don't see it, okay, count with me. Here's one, two, three, four, and five. So I know that phosphorus is going to have five pairs of electrons. So the electron domain geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. Not going to write it, okay, but trigonal bipyramidal, exactly what we just talked about. The hybridization, which I should put next to here, the hybridization is sp3d, okay? Now, it is going to have five bonds. It's going to have a chlorine up top, chlorine on the bottom, and if you remember, it's going to have that planar in the middle. Here's the CLs, CLs, and I have to, unfortunately, add all the lone pairs to do this correctly. Chlorine's going to show six lone pairs, and that's how you do it. Now, whether you did it the way that I first did it or rearranged it, notice this bond is a pair. Molecular shape, okay, well, because it fills all five positions, it's also, okay, going to be trigonal bipyramidal, okay? Polarity, this is nonpolar molecule, and the reason is it's very symmetrical. These dipole moments of top and bottom would cancel, and this is a planar molecule. This is a triangle in the middle, okay, and that all those um, arrows would cancel, okay? So the molecular shape is trigonal bipyramidal. Same thing here, trigonal bipyramidal. Okay, let's do PF6 negative. Now this negative means I'm adding an electron. So I'm going to start with a P, okay? I'm going to put out all my valence electrons. Now P has five, so one, two, three, four, five. Being negative one means I'm going to add another Okay, so I'm adding an electron that wasn't there. And that is the reason, my friends, it's negative 1. It doesn't say negative 1, it just says negative, which is the same thing as negative 1. So I put out my 5 valence and I added 1. Okay, now I should change my color back to something else. Now, fluorine is 6 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. So every F, okay, is going to get next to one of these valence. Now, to do this correctly, you have to show what? The lone pairs. Fluorine has seven valence electrons, so it fits nicely at the end. If you remember with me today, it's just an unhybridized p orbital overlapping the hybrid orbital of the p. And this is a Lewis dot diagram. Notice the middle, the phosphorus is happy by sharing a total of uh, in this case, 2, 4, 6, 8, oh, I forgot one here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Let me clean this up. Phosphorus in the middle. I'm going to bond to another F, bond to another F. Notice there's six pairs of electrons, one. Okay, let's do it. All right, there's six fluorines. What shape would that be? So I'm drawing this planar shape right here. You don't have to draw it this way. But if you're going to draw what I'm doing, you've got to show the lone pairs. Okay, fluorine's going to have six lone pairs. It has seven valence. One of its electrons is sharing with the phosphorus electron to make the bond. And you have to show lone pairs. The one to the left and to the right. Now, I know it says electron domain geometry. Really, that's just a word. I'm just showing you another way to write this. The word I'm looking for here is octahedral. Octahedral. That's the shape for six drawl. I can do this. That's the shape for six sides. Because they're all filled, this is also an octahedral. 
And this is also, whoa, wait a minute. I have a dash here to remind me of something. I can't say polar or nonpolar because it's charged. The charge means it's an ion. Ions do not have polarity. Remember, ionic compounds do not have polarity. If you talk about the polarity of an ion, it's kind of like asking about the marital status of the number five. It doesn't make any sense. If you're an ion, you're charged, you're completely that negative one. This whole thing is negative one, so there's no places to be nonpolar. So this is non applicable. Okay? All right, let's go on to SF4. SS, so S, start with the valence electrons, and we're going to have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to put the F in for one of them. Okay, I'm going to change the ink to another, uh, let's say black. This is fluorine's electron. Remember, it's there seven. This fluorine's nice and happy with eight. Remember, it's a row two element, so therefore it needs eight to be happy. Sulfur could be happy with eight. Don't think that just because it's sulfur in row three that it has to have an expanded octet. But in these drawings, expanded octets have to work to make some sense. We know SF4 and PF6 do this, so we're trying to explain it. So let's go to and count what we have here. We have one lone pair, we have lone pair bounded, another pair bonded, another pair bonded, another pair bonded, and lo and behold, we have two electrons left over. That counts as a lone pair. So I'm going to, guess what? Clean this up and draw this again. Sulfur in the middle. Okay, now, I'm going to count lone pairs of electrons, bonded and non-bonded. One, two, three, four, five. Five pairs of electron. What kind of hybridization is that? S, P, oh, uh, Christmas in July. S, P, what? S, P, 3, D. By the way, this one, octahedral, was S, P, 3, D, 2. Okay? That's six pairs. This is five. This is expanded, two expanded. So, um, I'm going to draw an sp3d. This is a trigonal bipyramidal family. It's the same one that I have drawn above for the first one, except I have a lone pair. Now, where do my lone pairs go? If you forget, party people, go please to your sheets right now. And there's my trigonal bipyramidal. Lone pairs go in the equator position. So I have one lone pair. There's a seesaw right there. So that's my molecular geometry right? The electron domain geometry is the geometry of the electron. So I have an F going to the top, an F going to the bottom, and I have three of these Fs, okay, in a planar molecule surrounding the center. Of course, to do this correctly, each F has to show all of its lone pairs. It's a little annoying, but hey, you'll get over it, as I have, okay, because I couldn't get over my computer today. Any case, there we go. Except I did this all wrong, and someone's probably screaming at me. There is a lone pair here, and I'm going to put it right here. That lone pair, I'm going to put, and let's just get rid of this. That lone pair goes right here. Okay, and of course, this is called the electron domain geometry, is very simply called the what? You got it. I guess I'll write it. Trigonal by pyramidal. What's the name of the shape? Seesaw. Okay, so that's how we do it. Try that. Okay, uh, I'll do one more. Hmm, let's do IF4 negative. Okay, I'll do IF4 negative. You do IF4 uh, and uh, why don't you just pause it right now and try this. So pause, 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 and I will do the, the, I'll show the answer. So pause IF4 negative right now. Okay, you should have paused this and done IF4 negative. So I'll give you another opportunity. Okay, when you stop this now, when you put this back on, I'll have it done to show the answer. Okay, so here are my answers. Okay. Uh, now, you may say, my scratch gets the finished product. How did, quite did you get that? I, I struggled with this a little bit. Well, here's what I did.